Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we're going to be learning how to put realistic patterns into your dress in Photoshop and as well how you can clean up your background and make it beautiful, clean and white. So the beautiful part of this video is that you're getting this pattern for free to apply it on your own images and see how it works for you. So the first thing I'm going to be doing, of course, you know, you guessed that, right, is to crop my image. Yeah, I'm just going to crop it like this press OK. Then I'm going to remove these two parts since I wouldn't want it in my picture. Of course, if you want it in your picture, you can leave it there. So I'll just take care of this. Remove this one from the upper side. Just like that. Do the same thing over here. Press Ctrl T here. Yeah. So I can now use my, uh, what is it called? My lasso tool to remove this just hold it feel content aware so you just allow photoshop do its magic and it's going to take care of that for you you can as well use your clone stamp to do the rest of the cloning just like this clean that out clean that out so you can as well use your mixer brush to smoothen this transition over here just like that okay Okay, so we are done. Now, let's get started with the pattern. So the first thing I'm going to be doing, which you need to also do, is to separate your clothes from your body. Because the, 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 the pattern or the texture is going to be applying on the dress, not on the whole image, which includes the body. So I'm just going to select the parts of the dress, if not all, that I want to apply the texture in. And in this case, I'm going to be selecting everything. So I'm just going to, of course, this might be a rough selection. Just want you to get the idea, understand the concept, and you take out your time and try it on your own image. So I'll just quickly make a selection on this. All right. So just hide this here as well. Okay, that would work there with this under. Let's saw her arm or minus her arm from the selection. Beautiful. Add here. Good. So I'm just going to manually select this area. All right. So I'm going to leave that white space there. Okay. Add here. Add this area as well. Okay, so I think so far we can work with this. So the next thing you need to do is to press Ctrl J to separate the dress from the original layer. So we'll have the dress on a separate layer now and we'll have our image on a separate layer. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go drag my pattern in. Look at the pattern we're going to be using. So we'll just drop it over the image. Yeah, press OK. Hold your alternate to clip it to the dress layer. Or the alternate to clip it to the dress layer. Now we'll have the pattern on the dress, but the problem is that it's looking flat. It's not looking like a dress because it's so smooth. Of course, if it should be a dress, then it should have all those waves, the shadows and the highlights. So what we're going to be doing in this one is that we're going to be changing the blend mode to multiply. So this is going to serve for our shadows. So if you look at the multiply, you're going to notice that immediately starts giving us it starts mimicking the pattern on the dress. So I'm going to, at this point, scale it to the point where I want it to be. Because after this point, if I start scaling, I might start making mistakes. So I'm going to press my V to pick up my selection, my move to just hold my alternate and start scaling it to where I want it to be. So just for the beauty of art, I'm going to leave the flower on her arm and leave this one over here on her leg brother and leave this one over here so i love the way it's looking right now the way it's bending and all of that so what the next thing we're going to be doing is to double click on the pattern it's going to open up blending for us so in this one we're going to be removing it a little bit from the shadow just use your blending to balance things slightly just like this so you notice that it's it, uh, the moment I'm dragging it, it's beginning to allow me to see some original textures behind there. So I I'm going to split that to make it look realistic. Do the same thing for the highlight. Now, the problem is that the highlight is washing the texture out. And that takes us to the next thing we need to do. So for this one, I'm going to leave it for the shadows. So I'm going to leave this one for the shadows. Press OK. So we'll have it for the shadows right now. So you can group this together, Ctrl G, and duplicate it. Now... When you duplicate this particular one, you should turn it to screen. Or 
any other blend mode that allows you see the highlights yeah i like this one or rather we can still maintain the multiply and this time around go back to blend if and remove it entirely from the shadows just like this remove it entirely from the shadows and just allow a little bit of the highlight to kiss out of it just like that beautiful press okay so now i'm going to create a mask for this group because i need to just paint it into the highlight so i'm going to hold my alternate and click on the mask it creates a mask for it then i'm just going to paint it into this area i'm going to just keep my flow somewhere around 22 so i don't overdo that just like this so you just so you will notice that all of a sudden we are beginning to see the original uh color behind it the highlight of that particular area which is very important is beginning to get restored so we'll just paint over this area so any area that has highlights in it is going to unveil and that is how you can even keep that more realistic now i can decide to match these two layers by converting it to a smart object because one more thing we need to apply is that we need to blur out the texture we need to blow out the texture so that it has also assumes the original texture of the dress so we we'll just wait for the uh smart object conversion so we'll have the two groups matched together in a smart object now next thing we'll do is to go to filter go to blur go to gaussian blur just pick a blur that is very very minute but still gives you a very good uh effect okay so i think i like what two is doing let's take it all the way to the zero and see what that does okay so let's keep it somewhere around two or three not bad or three is too much let's keep it at two press okay so the next thing i want to do i think i should do that before i do the gaussian blow yeah go to filter go to noise go to noise go to add noise so that it just adds that grain make sure you're using a Gaussian, is it Gaussian? No, let's use uniform. Make sure I'm using uniform and make sure it's monochromatic and just make sure that the grain is very, very minute. Yeah, I think I like it at 6.30. So now the reason why to add that is so that gives it that film grain so that it's, it also looks very, very realistic. Now we can add our Gaussian blur. So remember, we stayed at two. So at two is too much, it's taking away the grain. Let's try one. Too low, so we'll try somewhere around 1.5. Okay, so I like the way it's working there. Press OK. Now we have the green, we have the shadow, we have the, the blurring, and the effect is already looking so nice. So this is the this is the image without the texture. This is the image with the texture, the before, the after. So we can also zoom in to see if there are areas we miss. We can now decide to use mask and paint it in. I think I did a nice job there. So the next thing we are going to be looking at, which is the next section of the video, is to clean up the background so that it also makes the object stand out. So to do that, I'm going to select my object. All right, so once you have the object selected, right click on the image, go to select inverse, duplicate your background, right click one more time, go to layer via cut. So now we have our background on a separate layer and we'll have our object on a separate layer. Now, we are working on the background, so the object has to be up. We'll go over to the background, go to Hue and Saturation, or rather just press Control U, so that we we'll just do that directly on the background. So, go into your reds, reduce all the saturation, go into your yellows, and also reduce all the saturation. Now, you can even decide to brighten it up, do the same thing for the reds so the idea is to just make sure we have a very clean background right there beautiful press okay now make sure you reload your selection so that or rather just just hold your control click on the background icon or the thumbnail is going to make a selection of the background go to filter go to blur go to gaussian blur just blow it out until it starts looking smooth i think i like it like this press okay press ctrl d then create a solid color adjustment layer above it. Make sure it is white, which is practically colorless. Press OK. Change the blend mode to color. Change it to color. So you can now decide to restore a little bit of the original shadow. You can also check out for other blend modes that can even do that, that for you better. Let's see how that works. 
Okay, I don't think I like the soft light, the way it's handling it. Let's see. So the best thing to use is your color. So just put your color. I think luminosity might also work. Press OK. Then just pick up your brush and restore some original shadows back into your image. Just make sure she has her contact on the floor. So we can just restore original shadows like this. Just restore some original shadows. Then apply the mask. Very important. Apply the mask. So let's see how that works. Pick up your mixer brush tool and just clean up the floor. Just clean up the floor like this to make sure it's not having all those deaths and all those textures that are not good. Even with our shadow perfectly intact and we are good to go. So this is how you can even create. So if we remove the white background, you see how rough is already looking. So that white background does gives it that extra kick. If you like, you can even just keep it at normal and just reduce your opacity. All that is creative choice and it's going to work perfectly well. Thank you for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also on your notification bell. So you get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you.